Now back just a moment talking about the depth of the thread that is how far we're going to feed the compound in and it's a pretty uh, cut and dried thing with Acme threads and we've got a formula there again the depth equals pitch divided by two plus ten thousandths and in this case of six threads per inch we got the depth equals one half the pitch plus ten thousandths well the pitch is six threads per inch or point one six seven so depth is going to be 0.167 divided by 2 plus 10 and uh, simplifying it again that's 0.083 plus 10 thousandths or the depth again is 93 thousandths which I, I think is uh, 330 seconds just happens to come out even. If this part doesn't make sense to you go ahead and skip it but remember the compound on the lathe is set at 14 and a half degrees. We want to do all of our feeding with the compound, but the compound's coming in at an angle. We always want to return our cross feed to zero because that's our reference. Now since we're uh, feeding in with the compound at, uh, at 14 and a half degrees, we had to do just a little bit of trigonometry to, tell, uh, to determine exactly how far to feed in at an angle. And that is done uh, like this. Uh, we know the depth is going to be 93,000. So this is a little trigonometry problem where we're trying to find the hypotenuse of a triangle. And we already knew the 14 and a half degrees and we knew that uh, one of the other sides of the triangle was uh, was or is 93,000 so we needed to find the secant with the little trig tables of 14 and a half degrees and that equals 1.032 and I looked that up in the uh, trig table and then uh, using this formula hypotenuse equals side adjacent times the secant of 14 and a half degrees and reducing it again or not reducing it simplifying it hypotenuse equals uh, 0.093 times uh, this, which the secant up here which gives you a hypotenuse of 96,000 so you can see that even though we're feeding it at an angle it isn't a whole lot different than the 93,000 but it is 3,000 more uh, so remember that and uh, that's how far I'm going to feed the tool in uh, before I am to full depth of thread when we start cutting that thread I know what you're thinking. When is he going to cut some metal? Well, that's the way it was when teaching high school. The kids didn't want to listen. They just wanted to make chips. In review now, and you probably recognize this little chart from the, my other threading videos, but uh, these are the things uh, that we have to set up on the lathe prior to threading. So we're going to set the uh, gearbox at six threads per inch. We're going, to, uh, we're going to set the feed reverse lever so we're feeding from right to left put it in back gears and at the slowest speed compound is at 14 and a half degrees that's how we differ here from uh, regular v-threads and the cross feed set to zero make sure your tool is on center as far as the height of it is concerned and that the tool is square to the work with that gauge and that uh, your feed change lever is in the threading position because we will be using the half nut lever to feed This is the type of tool holder that I'm, hold, I'm using. It's a gooseneck. I happen to like that kind, but they're kind of rare. But this presents uh, the tool to the work uh, pretty much level. Now, if you don't have one of those, and you probably don't, you can use your Aloris type, and that also would put the uh, tool straight in. And if you don't have one of those, and you just got the regular Armstrong type tool holder like this, that's when you will have to grind this uh, top off like I showed you in one of the pictures. We're at the closing 14 inch lathe now. I gotta hand hold the camera for a while so it's gonna be shaky. We've got the compound set for 14 and a half degrees. Now I'm cutting Delrin again. That's Delrin which is a, a form of acetal I think is a chemical name. Now the reason I do that is to speed things up. Uh, you're probably thinking, doesn't this guy ever cut any metal? Well, uh, actually the Delrin really cuts so nice. It's, and uh, Try it for, uh, you can buy it from J&L. It's good for a lot of small projects where you don't need strength too. 
So the two, uh, there's the tool all set up. It's already uh, at the correct angle and it's on center. And I did use that gauge to set it up so it's perpendicular to the work. We've got an undercut here so we can end our thread at the undercut. And uh, I, I'm holding it between center, or actually one ends in the chuck and the other ends in the center because this uh, material is a little bit flexible, especially since we got an undercut there and I don't want it to deflect. So uh, anyway, that's the way I'm holding it. And all of the other uh, setups were made on the lathe. We're at six threads per inch, so we're finally ready to start cutting. And just one other thing now. We're going to have our cross feed at zero. And we're always, even after we finish one pass, we're going to put it back at zero. And then we'll do all of our feeding with uh, the compound rest. And that's uh, 96 thousandths, but actually I'm going to feed in twice that much because uh, this is a, a direct reading dial, so I have to go in uh, 192 thousandths and then we'll be at full depth and we'll try it <clears throat> using that nut. Alright, let's try a few passes like this with this camera angle. And I can catch the thread chasing dial on any number or any line. Here's our first pass. Backing off the cross slide, coming back, bringing it into zero. Going about another 30 thousandths on the compound. Now when I get to the undercut, I'm throwing the uh, half knot lever off. Concentrate on what you're doing. If the phone rings, let it ring. Starting to look like an acme thread. cleaning up thread and then we'll stop and check it because we're down to depth now of uh, 192,000. Didn't take off much that time. Now we'll stop and look at it. This is another view so you can wash my hands operating the controls. Concentrate on what you're doing when I get 
good for the undercut. Off goes the half nut lever. Out goes the cross slide. Move the carriage back. Move this into zero again. Make another feed with the cross slide, about 30,000, or the compound rather. And I'm going to catch it on, again, any number or any line because it's an even number of threads per inch. Let's watch it from this angle if I can stay out of your way. Half nut lever off, cross slide out, carriage back, cross slide into zero, compound in about 30. Catch it on any number or any line because it's an even number of threads per inch. And concentrate on what you're doing. Throw the half nut lever off. Back out. Cross slide. Return the cross slide to zero. Feed that in again. Catch on any number or any line. Okay, what was that, about eight passes? And I'm gonna put that nut on and it, and it goes right on, slicker than a whistle. So there's your Acme thread. Of course, I only cut a thread that was uh, one inch or one and a half inches long to speed things up, but you could do your Acme thread any length you need. Well, there it is. I made two of them so I could show you uh, several views as I was cutting the thread. I kind of enjoyed doing this. This was fun. I haven't done an Acme thread in a long time. Hope you're successful when you do it. You can watch this video over and over. This is Tubal Kane in Illinois saying so long for now.